Hello. Hi, how are everyone today? I'm Mrs. Arnold, and we are going to be reading from the Zella. So at this time, I'm going to share my screen with you. And let me give me a second to organize it. Okay. So how is everyone today? It's great seeing you all. So our um, article here is a kids article that we're gonna be reading from today and it's entitled, Heading to High School, Teen Who is Blind Sees Opportunities, Not Obstacles. And um, once we complete our reading, then we're gonna go into an eight question quiz. Once we get our quiz finished up, and um, by the way, I will give you time to answer in between every question. You can pause the video for either, I'll, I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video or either answer, it's your choice. Um, if you need more time, please pause it. And um, conscious staff should have a, the handouts for the worksheets. They should have the quiz worksheets. But in any event that you do not receive a worksheet, please feel free to record your answer on um, a loose leaf piece of paper, the same sheet of paper that you will be recording your exit question. And that's what we'll end with the exit question. So um, have that sheet of paper, pen or pencil handy to record that after our um, activity section is uh, finished. And so we will begin. Here's a really cool picture. Here's our blind student. Um, he has a, an instrument there. And I want to say that's a shell a cello. yeah and it is uh he uh uses his arm motion his arm arm motion he will use to play the cello during a lesson at the bishop Dunn catholic school in dallas on june 7 2017 so Okay, okay, so let's get started with our reading. This takes place Farmers Branch, Texas. The students packed the auditorium, diplomas in hand, on a Thursday in late May. The newest eighth grade graduates of Mary Immaculate Catholic School. Over Kate, they and their families marked the transition from one life stage to another while enjoying their memories of the past. These memories in the form of photos played on a screen high above the crowd. As the slideshow began, Zach the Bodos, the Bodo, uh, the Bodo, age 14, relinquished a stack of papers to his stepfather so he could focus on holding a cup of punch and a white cane. The graduates howled and giggled as the photos traced their lives from infancy to childhood to adolescence, but Zach could see none of this. There you are when you were little, his mother, Joanna, Eel, told him as one photo appeared. New skills, new disappointment. Six years ago, Zach was diagnosed with cone rod dystrophy, an incurable eye disease that would gradually kill his retinas. With her, with her son's vision rapidly vanishing, Yui had two priorities to help Zach prepare for a life of blindness and to offer him visual experiences that he wouldn't be able to enjoy once his sight was gone. As Zach's new journey began, he learned to read Braille, to do math on an abacus, and how to use a cane. In addition to his grade school, studies in addition to his grade school studies. Armed with new tools and technologies and aided by supportive teachers and classmates, he lifted the grades that he had, that had fallen with his failing vision. But there were disappointments too. 
like having to give up soccer and tough questions posed by his vanishing window to the world. Why me? Why is this happening? Excited to go to school. Five years later, his voice and octave and octave lower, the Louisville, Texas team is headed to the unfamiliar physical setting of high school. Upbeat, thoughtful, and confident, a kid in a kid into the Tchaikovsky fitness and political theaters, the Tchaikovsky fitness and political theater thrillers. Oh, okay, so he was into that. A kid into the Tchaikovsky fitness and political thrillers. He's gone and grown up on us, said Beth Jeffrey, his former Braille teacher. Graduation, Zach said, kind of came by pretty fast. I'm really excited. Earlier this year, Zach joined his fellow eighth graders as they hiked Enchanted Rock, the 425 foot high granite dome outside Fredericksburg. It was a symbol of how far his journey had taken him. You would never knew, or you would never know. The 57th 57 eighth graders had lined up in the foyer of Mary Immaculate Church, girls in red gowns, boys in blue. The pianist played a sonata by Beethoven, the German composer who wrote his most acclaimed works with completely, while completely deaf. One by one, the students came forward, pausing to do the sign of the cross before heading to their places. When his turn came, when his turn came, Zach stepped up, executed the motions, and strode briskly to his seat. If you didn't see the cane tucked to his side, you might not guess his central vision is totally gone, with his peripheral vision not far behind. When it got to 22,000 or 20 over 2,000, they stopped measuring. You it said. He can't tell if his shirt is inside out. He has to feel the scene. So 2020 vision when his got to 22,000, which is wow, they stopped measuring. Becoming blind. It was around the first, around first grade that his start, his sight started to go like black splotches of paint cast on a window. A series of doctors offered glasses, but no remedy. Zach started running into things, tripping, swinging the ba bat at baseballs already gone by. And he began lowering his face to the table while doing homework. Hewitt called Zach's pediatrician. Something's not right, she told the doctor, who refers Zach to a neurologist. Oh, okay, I guess this is before they found out. After two years without any answers, the Retina Foundation of the Southwest diagnosed Zach with cone rod dystrophy. It is a disease that gets worse over time. It limits his eyes' ability to absorb the waste product, the waste produced by their electrochemical reaction to light. The disease was destroying his eyes retinas. For Zach, barely in the third grade, life had irreversibly changed. It takes a lot of skill to be a good blind person, Stephanie Fleming, Zach's optometrist, said then. Crossing streets, getting from the parking lot into the grocery store, knowing how to tell the difference with money so you get the correct change. Yeah. You have to be well educated so you end up with a good job and insurance and able to move out and get your own place. All these things have to be considered even though he's only eight. Learning quickly. But the diagnosis, while devastating for his family, was in some ways a relief to Zach 
an avid learner, he finally got the tools to save his failing grades. He learned the Braille alphabet in a month. He studied orientation mobility in such settings as Dallas's North Park Center. The center offered real life obstacles. To give him visual memories, the family scraped together funds to take Zach to the top two places on his list. They went to the Statue of Liberty and Atlantis. The Bahamian Resort, he associated with the favorite cartoon character, SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay, that's what Atlantis is. So they went to Statue of Liberty and then they went to Atlantis. Atlantis is the Bahamian Resort, he associated with the favorite cartoon character, SpongeBob SquarePants. There were frustrations too. Zach is sometimes un unable to enjoy insights that um, to enjoy insights that amuse his friends. Zach is sometimes um, unable to enjoy. I think that's another typo there. We'll take out the N and reread that. Zach is sometimes unable to enjoy sights that amuse his friends. He cannot share his family's view of a mountaintop sunrise in Hawaii. Eventually it got to where he could play video games, but he could only play by standing inches away from a 55 inch television screen. So he's a typical kid, said Linda, Linda Coffin, Mary Immaculate's assistant, assistant principal. He wants to be in the mix with everybody, but at times it's hard. He can't go to PE, so he studies. And that ends our reading portion of our article. So let me zoom back out. That's what the problem is. Okay, so here's our activities and then we're gonna start our quiz. Question number one. Select the paragraph on the section, Becoming Blind, that explains why Zach is going blind. A, it was around the first grade that his sight started to go, like black splotches of paint cast on a window. cast on the window. A series of doctors offered glasses, but no remedy. Zach started running into things, tripping, swinging the bat at baseballs already gone by. B, when he began lowering his face to the table while doing homework, you had called Zach's pediatrician. Something was not right, she told the doctor who referred Zach to a neurologist. C, after two years without any answers, the Retina Foundation of the Southwest, I know Zach with Cone, cone rod dystrophy. It is a disease that gets worse over time. It limits his eyes ability to absorb the waste produce, the waste produced by their electrochemical reaction to light. The disease was destroying his eyes retinas. D, it takes a lot of skill to be good, a good blind person, Stephanie Fleming, Zach's optometrist said then, said then, crossing streets, getting from the parking lot into the grocery store, knowing how to tell the difference with money so you get the correct change. You have to be well-educated so you end up with a good job and insurance and able to move out and get your own place. All these things have to be considered, even though he's only eight. So I will let you review these. Select the paragraph from this section, Becoming Blind, that explains why Zach is going blind. And then we will collectively um, answer together. So there are the first options. <laughs> Why is that becoming blind? Or going blind? Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Here are the other two options, C and D. <laughs> That needs to be moved out of the way. Now oh, that's better. Yes, okay, so let's review this. And um, so, which paragraph explains why Zach is going blind? C is our correct answer because C tells about. Um, when the doctors um, found that he had the cone rod dystrophy. So let's check our answer and correct answer is C. Our next question, which of the following sentences from the article best supports the idea that Zach did not let his blindness discourage him from accomplishing things? A, with her son's vision, vision rapidly vanishing, you had two priorities to help Zach prepare for a life of blindness and to offer him visual experiences he would be, wouldn't be able to enjoy once his sight was gone. Or B, armed with the new tools and technologies and aided by supportive teachers and classmates, he lifted the grades that had fallen with his failing vision. C, but there were disappointments too, like having to give up soccer and tough questions posed by his vanishing window to the world. Or was it D, when his turn came, Zach stepped up, executed the motions, and strode briskly up to his seat. If you didn't see the cane tucked to his side, you might not guess his central vision is totally gone, with his peripheral vision not far behind. Which of these statements best supports, or, um, which of those paragraphs? Um, best supports the idea that Zach did not let his blindness discourage him from accomplishing things. Which sentence best support that? And here are the options. Here's our last one. <coughs> Okay, so which of the sentences best supports the idea that Zach did not let his blind, excuse me, his blindness discourage him from accomplishing things? Our correct answer is B, right? Um, the new tools and technologies and aided by supportive teachers and classmates, he lifted the grades that had fallen with his failing vision. So that sentence best supports that he didn't let the blindness discourage him. D was also um, it, a good answer. I mean, it's not the right answer. It's not the most one um, correct that would best support. But D does show that he um, had pride and was thriving. You know, he took his, um, uh, went up, stepped up, executed the motion, strode briskly back to his seat, and it was his turn to go up. And if you didn't see the cane tucked to his side, you might not guess his central vision is totally gone with his peripheral vision not far behind. That one um, is not the most correct, but it's not a false one uh, option here either. So our most correct um, or most Support and best supports is B. And let's check and show our answer. And there we have it. Question number three Which two details include central ideas of the article? One, with her son's vision rapidly vanishing, you had two priorities to help Zach prepare for a life of blindness and to offer him visual experiences. He wouldn't be able to enjoy once his sight was gone. Two, earlier this year, Zach joined his fellow eighth grade eighth graders as they hiked Enchanted Rock, the 425 foot high granite dome outside Fredericksburg. 
three, an avid learner, he finally got the tools to save his failing grades. He learned the Braille alphabet in a month or four, eventually, well, and four, eventually it got to where he could play video games, but he could not, but he could only play by standing inches away from a 55 inch television screen. Which one of these options best support that? Is it one and three, one and four, two and three, or three and four? And was asking which two details include a central idea. So I'm gonna let you reflect on the uh, sentences or those paragraphs and see which two is a central idea. And I'll be right back. Okay, and here are the other options. Or the other paragraph. And then here are all our options. Is it one and three, one and four, two and three, or D three and four? And so um, let us answer number three is A. The um, one and three are the central ideas. One, with her son's vision rapidly, rapidly vanishing, you had two priorities to help Zach prepare for a life of blindness and to offer him visual experiences he wouldn't be able to enjoy once his sight was gone. And three, an avid learner, he finally got the tools to save his failing grades. He learned the Braille alphabet in a month. One and three are the correct answers. So A is our correct choice here. Let me show our answer. Okay, question number four. Which statement would be most important to include in a summary of the article? A, Zach's parents saved money to bring him to the Statue of Liberty in Atlantis before he lost his vision. B, Zach is a blind high school student interested in Takovsky fitness, Takovsky, Takovsky fitness and political thrillers. C, Zach's doctors gave him glasses to help his vision, but they made very little difference. Or D, Zach, like other blind people, has to learn many new skills to be able to function in the world. Which statement would be most important to include in a summary? Let you reflect on these. Which would be most important to include in a summary? And I will be right back. And let's co um, go over our correct answer here, which would be most important to include in a summary of the article. Our correct answer is D, right? Zach, like other blind people, has to learn many new skills to be able to function in the world. And let's show our answer, and the correct answer is D. And let's go to question number five. Which answer choice would best describe Zach's approach to his disease? A, he is devastated by his diagnosis and depends upon his family and teachers for help and support. B, he is unshaken by the obstacles he faces and is confident in his ability to find a good job as an adult. C, he is frustrated by the things he is unable to do but has successfully 
successfully adapted to life with failing vision. Or D, he is disappointed by the negative impact that blindness has had on his social life, but is hopeful for the future. Which of these accurately reflects the, the best description of Zach's approach to his disease? And I'll give you time to reflect, and then we will answer together. Okay, and so the best description of Zach's approach to his disease is more reflective in C, right? He is frustrated by the things he is unable to do, but he has successfully adapted to life with failing vision. So C is our correct answer. Let's show our answer, and there we have it. Question number six, Zach would most likely agree with which of the following statements? A, people who are blind should not be held to the same standards as people who can see. B, getting a diagnosis of a disease is better than living in a state of uncertainty. C, it is not worth participating in something if you are unable to fully experience it. Or D, most blind kids are unhappy because they cannot participate in the same activities as their friends. Which of these would Zach most likely agree with? And I will give you time to reflect and answer. And here's the... So, okay, um, so the... Zach would most likely agree with which of the following statements. We know here our correct answer. All the others are false except for B. B is our correct answer. Zach would agree that getting a diagnosis of a disease is better than living in a state of uncertainty because recall he was more relieved once he did get the diagnosis and was able to get his braille and different things to uplift his uh, bring his grades up or uplift his grades and therefore uplifting his spirits because he had more certainty in his life. So B is our correct choice. Let's show our answer. And here, there we have it, B. Uh, next question, number seven. Read the following paragraph. The 57 eighth graders had lined up in the foyer of Mary Immaculate Church. Girls in red gowns, boys in blue. The pianist played a sonata by Beethoven, the German composer who wrote his most acclaimed work, works while completely deaf. What an accomplishment. Why does the author include this paragraph in the article? Is it A, it highlights a famous person who was not limited by his disability? B, it illustrates a vivid picture of what the gra graduation looked like. C, it provides important information about the size of the graduating class. Or D, it weaves in an interesting fact about a sonata that readers may not have known. Which one of these reasons why the author includes the paragraph about Beethoven in the how the um, eighth graders lined up in the Immaculate Church and the German composer, um, the information about Beethoven um, being deaf, but that's when he wrote his most acclaimed works while completely deaf. So which paragraph in the article? Or why does the um, author include that paragraph in the article, rather? And I will give you time to reflect on that one. Okay, so let's answer together. Um, why does the author include this paragraph in his article? 
Um, the correct answer is A, right? Because it highlights a famous person who is not limited by his disability. And let's show our answer. And our correct answer is A. So we're at our last question, quiz question. Read the following paragraph from the section you would never know. One by one, the students came forward, pausing to do the sign of the cross before heading to their places. When his turn came, Zach stepped up, executed the motions, and strode briskly to his seat. If you didn't see the cane tucked to his side, you might not guess his central vision is totally gone with his peripheral vision not far behind. How does this paragraph contribute to the reader's understanding of Zach? A, it illustrates how quickly Zach has learned to overcome his disability. B, it develops a better idea of Zach's experience. It develops a better idea of Zach's experience during his graduation. C, it hints that Zach is slightly embarrassed by his blindness. D or D, it shows that Zach wants to be seen as capable and independent. So how does this paragraph contribute to the reader's understanding of Zach? Give you time to reflect on this one. And then we will answer together. Oh. Okay, and so um, why, how does this paragraph contribute to the reader's understanding of that? And so our correct answer is D, right? It shows that Zach wants to be seen as capable and independent because that's what he basically did in that article. He was just as capable and he was independent and you may not even know him. he was almost blind the articles that, that paragraph states. Um, so D um, is our correct answer. It shows that Zach wants to be seen as capable and independent. Let's show our answer. And there we have it. That is our correct answer, D. And that completes our quiz and our activity section. And so um, exit question is next. Get your paper handy if you don't already have it. And please, if you don't mind sharing, tell about a time when something was difficult for you to perform. Something just was not um, as tangible for you. If you can um, tell, just answer that question a couple of sentences just to let us know, um, although you may not have the obstacle that Zach had, there's a lot of obstacles that can get in our way, um, even if we have all our, uh, we don't have any disabilities. I mean, even if we can see here, taste, smell, there could be challenges. So that's a better word. Yeah, tell about a challenge, something that you had to face that was challenging and how you overcame it. Simple as that. Just a few sentences. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And when you complete all of your work and you please pass it in to your teachers or if there is no teacher there, please pass it up to your uh, cottage staff. And cottage staff, if there's not a teacher present, can you please take all completed work once you get uh, collected from all students to the PBX admin building. And your support is deeply appreciated. 
I thank you so much. And students, thank you so much for another virtual learning lesson with me. I look forward to seeing you very soon. We will be seeing each other again. And reading is always fun. I hope you liked it and enjoyed it just as much as I did. And I will see you on the next um, reading comprehension or the next learning experience we have together. Until then, please be well and stay safe. Okay, bye for now.